Hey everyone, I just wanted to put up a quick video about the last part of my Japan vlog, which really just details some of the tennis related items that I got when I was in Japan. Now, the stuff that I bought in Japan can really be classified into four categories, and those are racket headguards, grips, some strings that I really haven't found anywhere else. I'm pretty excited about reviewing them here on this channel. Uh, and then a tool to help with your serve technique. Uh, and that's really important to me because my serve is the shittiest part of my game and something I've committed to improving so it's as technically sound as it can be for someone at my level. So let me give you a quick walkthrough of the items I got in Japan and I plan on making reviews for most of these in the future. Now. I did film a lot of my adventures in the racket shops of Japan, uh, so I'll put a compilation of those clips at the end once I'm done talking about the items that I did bring back from Japan. Okay, so head guards. Now, this is really just a bit of plastic tape that you can put on the very tip of your racket, and it's supposed to protect from scrapes and abrasion as you may or may not rub your racket on the ground um, during the course of play. Now, that's not a problem for me, but it is a problem when I play squash because so much of the squash is played tight to the wall. So there are often times when your racket scrapes against the wall. So I just generally have used uh, electrical tape before in the past. Uh, it doesn't stick very well. So I'm hoping that I can use some of this stuff to, to test and see if this does a better job or not. I got two different kinds. This is a brand that's very, very popular in Japan. Uh, but I also found these Yonex ones, which are quite a bit more expensive. Uh, but I'm hoping that um, I can test them side by side and see which one I like more. Okay, grips. Now, I bought quite a few that I have never seen before. But by far, the one that I'm excited to try is this one. It's called Bow Brand. And it's quite popular in Japan. And it was specifically recommended to me by someone who I played against. Uh, and I tried it out on his racket. And I just love the feel of it. So I bought quite a few and I'm hoping to put this through its paces um, and really see what it's made of. So expect a review of this soon, but I may be getting a friend of mine to uh, get me more or ship me more from Japan. The second thing is this thing, which is uh, a, a dry grip, like it's like a tourner grip competitor, but it's, it's a lot grippier than tourner grip. Um, kind of in between a Wilson overgrip and a tourner overgrip. Um, so I'm quite excited to try this because I've never found a uh, tourner grip to to work for me. Uh, but I can imagine a world where something between the Wilson uh, Pro Overgrip and and the tourner grip might be something I'm uh, I may like. So I'm hoping to give this a run and expect a review on this very soon as well. Okay. Okay. So strings. Now I don't want to give too much away here because the strings that I did bring back are currently in my racket and are being tested. So those reviews are upcoming. But I want to talk about one string that I'm particularly excited about that I have not yet tested. And it's this one. Okay. Now this uh, Gosin gum zone string is for something called soft tennis. And I personally had never heard of soft tennis until I went to the racket shops in Japan. And it's very popular in Southeast Asia. It's basically uh, a lighter version of tennis, the way I see it. It's played with a ball like this. It's, it's kind of like an oversized squash ball. It's made of rubber, very, very soft. And, and the rackets that uh, you uh, play the sport with also tend to look uh, a lot like a hybrid between a tennis racket and a squash racket in the sense that they are uh, about halfway in size in terms of racket head sizes. Uh, and the shape of them is halfway between a squash racket and a tennis racket as well. Now, I don't play soft tennis myself, but I do play squash. Uh, and I was very interested in this string is because this string has a gum rubber coating on it. And because the squash ball is so similar to the soft tennis ball, I figured I'd be able to use this uh, soft tennis string as an experiment to see what happens if I put a string that has a gum rubber coating on it in a squash racket. Does a string like this grab onto the ball just that much more? Now, I've reviewed the strings I use for squash uh, in a previous video on my channel, so go check them out. The link will be in the description below. But uh, that string has a very grippy texture coating on it. 
and I figured that a gum rubber coating might grip the ball even better. Um, as you know, if you've watched that video, I am a big fan of textured coatings, maybe not as much for tennis, but definitely for squash. So I'm really hoping that this grabs the ball just that much more. Um, yeah, I'm not even sure if the string will fit uh, in the racket, but I'm quite excited to find out. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is this tool called Serve Up. And it's basically this piece of plastic that has a pivot in the middle here. So it flops this way, but this way it's pretty stiff. And the idea behind this is that it's supposed to improve your starting position for your serve. For me, my serving position tends to be a bit more like this. So you can see that this thing flops over and it's not supposed to do that. Uh, what you end up doing is your racket hand should be so that this always stays rigid. This thing was pretty inexpensive. And since I've made a commitment to improve my serve over the course of the next 12 months, I figured this was a good purchase. Uh, and I've definitely seen some dividends uh, paid uh, just by using this tool over the course of, let's say, last 20 days or so. Okay, so that concludes my adventures in Japan. Thanks for coming along for the ride. And I'll see you in the next one. So everything in Japan is small. Look at these birdies, cans of birdies. They're so small. Generally, they tend to be this big, but look at the size. It's much, much smaller, much smaller, less than half the size. In Japan, ball sizes or ball cans tend to be just two balls. That's it, two balls. So it's either the two ball can sizes or four balls. I personally think that makes sense. Every time I go and play, I take two cans of balls and I open all two of them. So I have six balls because inevitably two or three kind of go out uh, of the court, someone hits them out. Yeah, the four can sizes makes a lot of sense, I think. Surprised they don't do it in the States. Again, the two and four balls and I think I found the only three, I guess, can balls uh, and it's the Minion brand from Wilson, I guess, for kids. Yeah, kind of neat, actually. Oh, wait, there's also a Wilson three ball one as well for the Roland Garros edition. Nice. I also haven't seen these Technifiber balls before. It's like either the X1 brand or line, or there's also the NFX line. Interesting. This one definitely comes in a metal, it's in a metal container. Super interesting. Okay, another very interesting thing, Wilson grips, but made in Japan. Made in Japan, all of them. I wonder why. Um, and I wonder if they feel differently. I think I may buy a couple to try. Turns out it's not just uh, Wilson, but Prince as well. Maybe a couple other brands may be made in Japan. It's quite interesting. I'm thinking maybe they have a supplier here, one factory that makes it for all of these other brands. But yeah, they're made in Japan. Okay, so here's a really interesting thing. This is supposed to be a Torna Grip knockoff, but it feels much, much different. It's actually quite grippy. It's not as, um, I guess, chalky or dry. Um, this actually feels like something I would use. So it's a local brand called Kimoni. And I asked the, the folks here that work here, this seems to be like one of the more popular brands that people tend to buy. Yeah, I may, I may bring one back just to have a look. Now, this is another thing that was uh, recommended to me. Um, it's called the Bow Brand. It's a very unique feeling uh, grip. It's kind of like a halfway between Wilson Overgrip and the Yonix Supergrip, but even then it feels like a little bit different. Um, yeah. It's very, very highly recommended, um, and I did try hitting with it. It felt just phenomenal. So I'm going to try a bit of this, um, take it back home, and see how it works. Okay, here's another thing. Did you know hydrogen made shoes? What the actual F? I had no idea. I mean, these don't look uh, too, too special just by the look of them, but I'm super interested. It's like a nice blend of super light fabric with just enough uh, protective, so if you slide, you don't burn through your shoes. Yeah, maybe, oh, look, isn't that their Prince label? So maybe they're just Prince shoes rebranded into 
Hydrogen? Yeah, not so sure. Oh, they are. Look at that. Friends, two are polite by hydrogen. Interesting. Look what I found. Razor soft. I've been wanting to hit with this for a while. And it's 18 gauge. Hell yes. So I'm here at um, the wall of tennis bags. And one thing that has continuously surprised me here is the fact that they have diadem stuff here on display. Like, diadem seems to have a pretty strong presence here, especially on the retail side, which I'm really surprised. It's like an American company, I believe, but I can't seem to find too many, um, too many diadem things anywhere. You walk into a tennis shop in America and you would never, ever see diadem, I think. But yeah, they have not only rackets, strings, but bags as well. And this is a duffel bag. It's not even a tennis bag, so. Wow, That's, it's really made me interested. Uh, all I can say is I'm much, much more interested in Diadem as a brand now to try. This is another thing that's pretty cool. Um, I was looking through the Diadem strings that they have. Uh, Solstice Power, Solstice Black, and I believe this is the Pro X. Yeah, the one that catches my eye is the Solstice Power. One, the color is amazing, but it also seems like it's the best match for me with uh, good spin and comfort. You can see the ratings here, the comfort's basically like almost all the way, but the spin is also crazy high for a rating because it's a star-shaped string. Yeah, quite interesting. I may give this one a try. I mean, I can get it in, uh, I can get in the States and in Canada, but um, I'm here now, so might as well. The one thing that gets me here is, is string pricing. It just seems out of whack. I don't know. They're a lot more expensive here than they are uh, in the States or Canada where where I tend to play for the most part. Um, yeah, look, like gut here is $82, $80. It's kind of insane. It's quite expensive. Um, yeah, even regular strings tend to be like way, way, way out of whack. Like, here's an example. I just made this review of the OG Sheep Micro Super. Watch it if you haven't amazing string. It's dirt cheap back home. It's like under five dollars or just around five after tax. And here it's like four thousand yen which would be the equivalent of 40 Canadian dollars or like 33 American. Yeah it's quite expensive. Look at this. No idea why. I mean gut feels like a deal compared to this thing. I mean this is just supposed to be cheap nylon. Here's another Tolson uh, string, but it's called Livewire, I think. Maybe they make Livewire for Gamma in the States. Okay, I don't know what soft tennis is, but uh, these look like smaller tennis rackets with extremely long throats. Like really, really long throats. Uh, and smaller head sizes. It's really interesting. And the most interesting thing is what the ball looks like. It's just this like plastic foam filled ball. Yeah, very interesting. I've never played soft tennis. Um, and I'm quite tempted to buy one of these and take them home with me to try them out. It's actually a great training tool. If you have uh, some elbow problems, I think this would be a great way to still get your tennis on and play with like a really soft ball maybe up against the wall yeah good tool so here's the soft tennis display and i'm guessing these are the soft tennis strings i've always been interested in what would happen if i put a string for another sport into a tennis racket maybe i should just get one and see what happens this is also really interesting i'm at the soft tennis string section and they have these Yonex branded edge guards, they are, I guess, to protect the tip of your racket if you scrape it against the ground or so. It's actually really useful for squash because so much of squash relies on having tight balls across the wall. So your racket does scrape the wall quite a bit. Um, and I've always been not happy with the, uh, the edge guards that I've used in, in squash. It's essentially electrical tape. It comes off super easily. It doesn't stick too, too well, but I might give this one a try. It's pretty nice. And it comes in a bunch of different colors and it kind of is shiny. Look at that. 
Kind of cool. I'm always interested in local brands. I've asked the people here. Apparently, this Kimoni brand is super popular here. Um, yeah, the price difference is insane. Two of these cost three thirty, and one edge guard here is three thirty itself. Um, so that's quite like you get two for the price of one. Essentially, it's half price. These soft tennis strings just look like nylon strings, to be honest. Uh, there's some multi-filament kinds that are, uh, or mono multi they call it. It's like hundreds of tiny fibers kind of woven together in, in like a shell. So it's very similar to the squash string that I really, really like. Um, but yeah, the rest of them seem to be just a monofilament surrounded by like kind of a multi-filament or a nylon with a monofilament braid. Quite interesting. When I actually go look at the racket, you can tell it's just, yeah, it looks like a very soft string. Yeah, quite interested in trying some of these out. Maybe I can put them into a tennis racket and see what happens. Might be an interesting experiment. Oh yeah, look at this OG Sheep series. Fantastic tennis string, but I guess they make it for soft tennis as well. I may, I may put one of these in a tennis racket anyway, just to see what it goes. I think I want to try this gum zone uh, line of strings. Just the packaging looks so fun. The reason I'm interested in this is because they recommend stringing uh, these soft tennis strings at 25 to 35 pounds. I mean, I, I get it, it's a softball, you don't need uh, much higher tensions, but if I'm already stringing at that tension, how will this perform? Okay, I think I found the weirdest thing in the world. Look at the shape of this racket. What is this? It looks like six-sided. It's really, really interesting. And I asked, uh, I asked the folks working here, it is meant to be for tennis. Yeah, that's amazing. I am super tempted to buy one and ship it home, so... Um, I can try and test it and play with it. Um, the other thing that appeals to me, um, and if you get the reference, you are awesome, but it's kind of is has six sides. It's like a hexagon. And hexagons are the bestagons, aren't they? Hexagons are the bestagons. Okay, so that's not the only kind. This is a 100 light FF, a 280 grams, 100 square inch size. Um, that seems like the one I would go for, but they have others here. So there's 110, which is 270 grams, so it's even uh, geared towards, uh, I guess, even beginners. Um, they have this one that's 105 and 285 grams, and then they have this massive 115 and 260 grams. That I would not go for. Uh, but yeah, the 100 square inch uh, seems pretty interesting. Uh, and funny enough, I've never heard of this brand. It's, it's an Italian brand, I think. And the price is very similar to what it would be if you paid in euros. Um, but yeah, uh, they do make other regular traditional size rackets. They, it's just this one seems to be pretty odd, to be honest. Oh, I just noticed one more. This is a 300 gram racket that has a much more traditional shape, a bit less wide. Maybe it would behave like a fair stick. But this is a 300 gram racket that I'm very interested in. Plus, I think I like the colorway more. Although, Hyper G would look amazing in this.